But anyway, listen, I thought we had a great night of fights. I mean, you know, there's some wars out there, and um, some people are going to the hospital, so they're not going to be available tonight. But I'm happy to answer uh, any questions you guys have. Um, let's just open it up at this point. How did you score the, the main event, Scott? Do you do that still? You know, my job is to promote it. My job is not to score it. Um, but, um, you know, I... I know that Slamenko clearly won the last round. It was the second round that was in question, and during the second round, I was kind of just watching as a fan, so I really didn't sit there and score the fight. He was, Musashi was such a huge favorite, like seven to one, maybe pushing eight to one. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about the guys that come over and struggle when they get over here, and is that not a testament to the quality of guys that you have over here to begin with? Yeah, you know, guys, here, here's how I feel about it. Like, when, when, I, when I own Strikeforce, we're doing fights back in the day, we had some of the best fighters on the planet. And it was like, well, the UFC guys are better than the Strike Force guys. And then, you know, look, look what happened. Tyron Woodley, you know, Luke Rockwell, Daniel Cormier. Those are all our guys, right? So it's just that people, um, you know, feel that when they come over here, it should be easy. But, you know, Shemeko is a guy that, that had 55, 60 fights. I mean, that's going to be a guy that's dangerous. And he hits hard. He's not afraid of anybody. Uh, he was a foreign champion. And, uh, and he brought it. So... To me, I think the people that have come over here from other leagues, they have had a hard time. And, you know, I just say, hey, welcome to Bellator. You know, this is going to be a tough going for everybody. But was it not testament to, I'm not saying it was one-eyed, but was it te not testament to Degard Musasi that he fought almost 12 minutes in that fight with one eye virtually closed, Scott? Yeah, you know, the way I look at that is that um, Shlomenko was trying to punch him. <laughs> Right? I mean, he was, that's what he was doing. He was, so he did the damage. So he does, he, you know, to me, that fight, I thought I was going to get stuck at one point, and Shlomenko would have probably won the fight. So, you know, he, he punched him, he did the damage. It was something that he intended to do, and it created a lot of damage on, on, on Giger. So, on the one hand, you can see, yeah, he couldn't see, but the reason why he couldn't see is because Shlomenko punched him, and that's, that's just the name of the business. But I'm asking, was it an admirable performance oh, yeah. in that context from Musalsi as well? Yeah. I mean, you know, Gegard is a tough guy. And uh, he uh, he has a lot of perseverance. You know, he has a dominant spirit, man. He will come back for this. Um, and uh, I know that, uh, that he's probably a little bit disappointed in his performance. But, you know, to me, I, I, I thought that this fight was going to be a tough, tough fight for him. And, uh, and it was. So... On to the next one. Is that a done deal for him that he gets the next title shot? Or, um, or do you have to wait because of how things played out and because of his eye and everything else? Yeah, I mean, listen, he might have an oral fracture. I'm not sure. And if he does, he's going to be out for six, eight months, maybe a year. Who knows? So uh, these are the, that's why we always like to come back and see how the fights unfold, see how the fights do. And then we'll go back and we'll reshuffle the deck. Uh, and that's what we'll do here. We'll wait to see what the doctors say about his eye. And then we'll make a decision at that point. Yeah, I think the doctor was really concerned, and, uh, and um, you know, like Gary said, that Gary was fighting with basically one eye for, you know, 12 minutes, so it was um, a, a tough night for him, but um, when I looked over there, and the doctor came back in the, into the cage, I said, oh, they're, I think they're going to stop it, but, but he didn't, he let him go, and I'm not sure what the dialogue was between the two, but I think he said something to him, and then, you know, he, I know he covered his eye, and Gary must have been able to see what the doctor wanted to see, and and then continue. What you Sorry. No, my understanding is Gager is is on his way to the hospital. Is that right? Yeah, Gager is on his way to the hospital. So I have not talked to him uh, since the fight ended. Same situation. She's in the hospital right now. Um, absolutely. I mean, to me, you know, th those those two girls are. It's special, it's admirable what they're, what they're doing, attempting to come over to mixed martial arts from having such a, you know, a great bo a boxing career and a boxing background. And it's not easy, it's a much different situation. You know, you're fighting in a, in a cage, it's not a ring, there's not, you know, it's, it's just a different environment. And so for them, there's gonna be a certain learning curve. And um, I think that uh, if they wanted to fight in the future, we would definitely consider that. On the other side of the coin though, what a performance tonight from Christina with Christina Williams. I don't know how much you've seen of her. Many people hadn't seen much of her. What did you make of her? Is she a star in the making? I mean, you know, when, when I look at her performance, you know, she wasn't she wasn't nervous. 
She wasn't tired. She wasn't intimidated by, by Heather at all. And she was there to fight, and she fought a tough fight. And Heather was there, you know, doing her thing, and trying to catch her. And and um, she just got out kicked tonight. I think it's a, that's what that's what it was. A kickboxing in in her system is is was was working well. And and you know, for Heather, she just got caught a couple times with those kicks, and, and that, that was it. But as a near fight, even though she's a near fight, it was mm -hmm. her Bellator debut. Has she possibly put herself in the frame? For the flyweight title going forward, I mean, I don't, th I don't think you put her in the title mix, but I mean, Gareth, I think you have to put her like she is a, a somebody that has a lot of potential, and so we'll get her some more fights, see how she does, and then, and then, uh, you know, we'll decide what we do. How impressive was that to you? Though, someone in their pro debut in front of a big crowd fighting someone who's established in combat sports. Just that being on the pace like that. That's impressive. I mean, honestly, to to have somebody come out and perform the way she did. Um, under this scenario, having a you know a crowded arena, you know, live TV, and fighting Heather Hardy, I think she did herself uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of good as far as you know building her brand, building her name, and building uh, some great fights ahead for her. Uh, Scott, in, in many organizations, the main event is a five round fight. Is there any talks to change Bellator to add five round fights for the main event? Because if you have two more rounds, this could be a completely different decision. You know, that's something that uh, we've been really debating internally because once we do it, we can't go back. And um, you know, right now, all the all the main events except for title fights are three rounds. Um, but uh, you're right. If this was a five round fight, it could have a different outcome. So we're going to evaluate it. I'll talk internally to our guys, and then you know we'll keep talking about it because. Like I said, at some point we'll probably do it, but once we do it, we're not going to be able to come back. Um, Bobby, we've been talking to him. I know he's been very busy with his kids and, and pro wrestling, um, so I'm not sure what his status is. Um, but um, I think he's not going to be fighting any time before the end of the year. Uh, the heavyweight the title, I think, first quarter. Maybe going into the second quarter, we'll you know we'll do something big as far as uh, having a, a heavyweight championship fight. Is there any frustration about Minikov sort of just staying in Russia, not in the Minikov is not our champion anymore. Minikov, as far as I'm concerned, is a fighter that's under contract with Bellator. But uh, you know, it's, to me, it, it's almost irrelevant at this point because we have so many great heavyweights now that when we put uh, this heavyweight you know title fight together, it's going to be something really special. Um, like I said, you know, uh, at the last fight, I'd like to crown a champion first and then we can talk about that. But I think crowning a champion is, is, is kind of becoming clear, uh, you know, who we're, we're going to probably have to fight. And uh, that's something that uh, I don't want to talk that much about right now, but in the upcoming weeks, we'll probably have something for you guys. You've been signed by younger kids, Tyrone Claxton, Logan Storley. Mm -hmm. uh, Two part question first is Akeem and Wogan want for radar for Bell Tour second. When do you expect to start? You know, our guys work closely with their camps, and and really we let them decide when they're ready to make their debuts. Or, you know, like for instance, if they're coming off a big collegiate wrestling background, and um, and they feel like they're ready to go, then we'll put them in there with somebody comparable. But if not, you know, we'll let them continue to develop for another six months, eight months, a year, however much time they need, you know, to to get to the point where they feel comfortable that they want to come here and do it. And um, and that, that's that been our philosophy, is that we'll, we'll be ready when they're ready. One or two more, guys. Scott, a couple of weeks ago, your TV ratings at Bellator outrated the UFC ratings. Tell us how big that is for an organization like you, for that to happen. I mean, I think that, I don't think that's the first time that's happened. I think this happened before. But listen, you know, we're all in the ratings business, you know, and at the end of the day, when Spike gets good ratings, it's good for everybody. It's good for us. As you guys know, next year, uh, uh, Spike TV is going to turn to Paramount. And uh, I think that's going to start with the January 25th, uh, 20th fight between uh, Douglas Lima, our champion, at 170, uh, fighting Roy McDonald. Uh, so that fight will be on uh, the new Paramount network, which is, you know, Spike currently. So we've got, we got a great year ahead for uh, next year for 2018. I'm really excited about some of the stuff we're working on. Unfortunately, I can't talk all about it, but a lot about it. But um, I think we're going to have some really cool stuff for 
for the you know for the industry, the sport of MMA. We're going to keep doing our part. Thank you. You know, whether it's Ryzen or Bama or, uh, you know, KSW, I mean, we're all good friends and the door is always open. And uh, when Ryzen has asked for some fighters uh, from us, we've always sent them over. And that door has continued to be open. But um, right now, there's no plans to do that. Thank you, guys. Thank you.